Hey, what's happening, guys? I got a couple questions yesterday after the off-amp uh, buffer circuits. I said, what do you use it for? I explained that in there multiple times. You use it to separate a low impedance input from a high impedance output. It prevents the low impedance from pulling down the voltage of the high impedance circuit. So there's that. Now, I also got a couple questions. What else can you do with an off amp? Oh, my friends, you can do so many things with an off amp. Let's start by putting a simple off amp here, okay? This can be basically whatever off amp you want. Let's see how to do this here. Boom. Um, yeah. Okay. So now we've got our non inverting input on the top. I'm sorry, our inverting input on the top, our non inverting input on the bottom. What we need now is some DC voltage. So we're going to put in two batteries. This one is going to be minus nine volts. This one is going to be nine volts. And in the middle, we'll put a ground. So like this, like that. And then we'll hook up our positive VCC here. And our VEE here. So step one, power the op amp. And we've done that. Now, we're going to create a positive feedback network using two resistors here. And it's what's going to do. It's going to create a little bit of hysteresis that allows this thing to bounce from one end to the other without getting into a, a, some sort of self-induced oscillation. Okay. So we're going to try and get this at about a 1 hertz. So frequency of course is equal to 1 over 2 times R times C so we're going to go 35k and 30k then we're going to need a ground like so and then we'll hook up this little network here and this is going to go to our positive input, our, our non-inverting input, as it were. Okay, so that is our positive hysteresis feedback. We've got half of the output voltage feeding back into there. All right, so now we're going to need our feedback resistor. I think in this case we're going to go with 50K. And our feedback resistor comes from the output, and it's going to go to our inverting input. But in order to make it an RC circuit, we need one more thing. We need the C. So we're going to need a capacitor. 100 nanos should do it and a ground so we'll connect these together like so one and two and if we put a voltage peaker on our output there and set this thing a fluttering you can see we're swapping between the nine and the minus nine let me adjust this here so you can see better. And there you go. You can see our simple square wave out. And if we adjust any of these, for instance, we take this 100 nanofarad and make it, say, 470 nanofarad, we've increasingly slowed down. Now, if we take it down to, say, 50 nanofarad, we sped it up a great deal. Let's go back to 100 nano, and let's see what happens if we adjust our feedback resistor here. 
So 50K down to 24K. Aha, uh -huh. see, they all make a difference. But remember, our frequency is equal to 1 over 2 times R, which in this case, 47K times C, 100 nanofarad, or 0.1 microfarad. Or what is that? 0 0.00001 microfarad, 0 0.001, something like that. Ah, scientific notation. I'm too old for that crap. Anyway, there you go. A simple op amp isolator. So now you've learned how to make a buffer, which will separate one side of your circuit from another so that what happens on the input side doesn't affect the output side. And you've learned how to make an oscillator, which you, means you can make a clock driver. Now, if you take an IC like the TL072 or TL082, where you have two in one, you can have a buffer and a clock driver in one IC. If you'd like to see that done on a breadboard, let me know down below, and we can do that as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to thank all the patrons who supported this channel. If you're not a patron yet, there's a link down below. Dollar a month's all I ask. Helps make new videos, pays the bills, and what's left afterwards, we buy fun stuff. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace.